There we go. There's a fish. I'm not sure what this is. That's good for this time of year. That's a nice one. What's up guys, really quickly before we get this video underway, just wanted to give all of you guys out there a huge shout out. I just wanna thank all of you for all your support on my last video, the steelhead video, I worked really hard on it and it seemed like you guys liked it. And just appreciate all the comments, the likes, everything, everyone who reached out to me. So a lot of people said it was their favorite video of mine and you know, just really appreciate it. I wanted to give you guys a thank you. Um, you know, it makes me feel like all that effort that I put into that video was definitely worth it. And you can look forward to more videos of that style coming up on my channel. But this video, we got a quick surf session for you. I'm currently out here hunting the herring spawn, but let's see what the action's like out at the beach. See you guys out there. Oh man. Ah, all right. Where are the perch at? Looking for perch today. Throwing the Lucky Craft. Nice and cold this morning, not gonna lie. Thought about, that was a bad cast. Thought about um, wearing sweatpants or waders today, but just didn't feel right. So, back in shorts as usual. See if we can find some fish out here. A little bit of seaweed out there. Man, it's cold this morning. But really quickly before we get started on fishing, just want to thank the sponsor for today's video. And the sponsor for today's video, it's a new sponsor. Really excited to announce, none other than Lucky Craft, the actual lure that I'm using in today's video. That is the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow 110 uh, metallic sardine color. This is a, a lure that I've been using for a long time. I was looking back at my channel. I think the first time I used it was almost five years ago. Um, and I don't know if it necessarily put me on the map, but it definitely got me, you know, got me kind of recognized as the Lucky Craft guy out here in the Bay Area surf. So shout out to Lucky Craft, it's been a long time in the making, and finally they are a sponsor for today's video. And you may see them in some future videos here, but today's action, the surf action, uh, in my opinion, it's tough to beat the Flash Minnow 110 right here from Lucky Craft for surf perch and striper too. They hit, both of them hit these lures. When I first bought this, I was a little skeptical. I, you know, I heard that they could, you could could catch a perch on this, but man, look at how big that lure is compared to a surf perch and their mouth is like, I don't know, if a big one opens wide is maybe like that big. But for whatever reason, I have no idea why. Maybe it's a territorial thing. Um, maybe it's just a reaction thing. I'm not really sure, but for whatever reason, the perch love these and so do the striper. I can see why a striper would eat these. I mean, this looks just like the bait fish that they're typically eating. Um, but surf perch, I don't know. I don't know why, but they hit it. That's all I have to say. So if you're looking to catch some fish, look no farther than Lucky Craft out here in the uh, West Coast surf. You know, I've never fished in Oregon, Washington, but I gotta believe that if you live up there and you're fishing the surf, I gotta believe that the perch up there would hit these too. So anyways, let's get back to fishing. There we go. There's a fish. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. I'm 
I'm not sure if this is a perch. It's been a little tough this morning. There's a little bit of grass in the water and it's making this lucky craft fight a little bit tough, but still fishable. I'm not sure what this is. Yeah, I don't think this is a perch. I think this is a striper. But the nice thing about this Lucky Craft is even when you're targeting perch, you don't leave striper off the table. There's definitely perch and striper living in the same little areas out here. And you can definitely get both. And yeah, definitely a striper. I think it's a keeper too. Come on. Oh yeah, nice striper. That's good for this time of year. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice one. All right, well, not exactly what we were expecting this morning. But that's a nice little surf striper right there. And uh, I'm gonna keep this one probably about 20, I'm gonna guess 26 inches. 25, 26 inches, I'll give a measurement here in a second. But anyways, yeah, nice thing about the Lucky Craft is even when you're coming out trying to target surf perch, it doesn't rule out the striper as well. Right, look at that one. Nice fish there. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this one. Um, personally, my experience of fishing for striper and eating striper is the best eating ones that you can get are the winter striper. And I'm pretty sure that's because uh, the winter striper aren't going back into the bay. Um, so if they're out here during the winter season, that means they probably stayed out here. They've been out here for at least a year. So I think that makes them a little bit cleaner. Maybe less uh, worms or parasites and all that stuff. And this is perfect size. Let's give him a quick measurement and see exactly how long it is. All right. Tip to tip. Oh man. Measurement skills on point. 25 exactly. You make a lot of YouTube videos? Yeah. I recognize yeah. you, dude. Uh, thanks. I've learned a bit from you, actually. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks very right much. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate it. What do you, uh, uh perch today? Yeah, I caught a striper earlier. Cool. Yeah. Uh, it's 25 inches. Cool. Yeah. Awesome, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good luck today. Good to oh, see you, Oh, thanks. Man. Yeah, you too. Yeah, keep up oh. the good work. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Always nice to meet subscribers out here. But anyways, just a couple of words of wisdom. First, well, I don't know if a words of wisdom is the right word, but a couple of words, nonetheless. First off, huge shout out again to Lucky Craft for sponsoring today's video. I will say one word of caution. If you're gonna fish this for striped bass, it's in your best interest to switch out the uh, hardware here. So the split rings, all three split rings there, and then all three of these hooks. Um, any striper that's bigger than probably the one that we caught today, very, very likely that it'll be able to straighten out these hooks and these split rings. Um, if you followed my channel for a long time, um, I'm not saying you're guaranteed to lose it, but I think there's a pretty good chance now. This exact lure, well, not this exact one, but same color, same style. I hooked a monster striper one time. It ended up being 36 inches, and I don't know how I was able to land that fish because all the hooks straightened out, all the split rings straightened out. Um, yeah, I just got really lucky. So, just wanted to eat that, give you that quick word of caution. If you're gonna fish it for striped bass, best interest to do so. Now, I'm testing out a few different hook styles and shapes, um, so look forward to that. I'll probably put it in a future video. Um, before I test it, I don't wanna give you any recommendations because I wanna make sure it works first. And then second, I just kind of have a question for you guys. So, there's a huge debate. Well, I don't know if it's huge, but there is a debate among the uh, striper community. You know, should you catch and release 
or should you catch and keep? What's the deal on the striper? Personally, I'm all in favor of catching and keeping. And I know, you know, a lot of people are in favor of catch and release because they want to grow the fishery. And that's true, if you want to get big striper, obviously the best thing to do is catch and release. And so I can see where they're coming from there, but I'm kind of leaning towards the catch and keep side of things. And the reason for that being is, you know, striper are, I don't know if you can consider them an invasive species, but they were introduced to the West Coast. They're not native to this area. And I got a feeling that a lot of the striper out there, especially the bigger ones, are direct competitors um, to the salmon that we have in this area and steelhead that are native to these waters. And it's no secret that the salmon and steelhead populations are all much lower now than they were, say, 50 years ago, especially 100 years ago, maybe. Um, and I know there's a lot of reasons for that, but I gotta think that the striped bass are not helping that situation. They might not be hurting it as much as some other things, but one, they're competing for the same resource, which is food, such as bait fish, such as like anchovies and stuff like that. And two, especially when the striper get into the bays and rivers, because striped bass are also um, is it andronomous. So I think that's the word. Uh, fish that can go in salt and fresh water. Um, so salmon are you know, one of the famous ones. But striped bass can do the same thing. They can go into fresh water just like a salmon can. And once they get up there, those striped bass are heavily foraging on the little fry. So little baby steelhead, baby salmon, um, or even the eggs. So I would imagine they probably eat those if they came across it. So, so like I said earlier, I don't know how much of an impact it's making, but they can't be helping the population. So for me personally, I'm all in favor of helping the native population, that being the salmon and steelhead. And so, for that reason, that's kind of why I'm on the catch and keep side of striped bass. And you know, they're not terrible eating. You know, the limit is only two, which is pretty low. I mean, that's the same thing as a salmon or even halibut. Those are all native here. Halibut limit's three. So, I mean, I agree that they are a fun fish to catch out here, but in my opinion, I don't think that they need such strict regulations. I mean, I think that halibut or salmon or whatever, anything else that's native to your lingcod, but also two fish. Well, I think uh, those should, if anything, have stricter limits than the non-native striped bass that are in these waters. But, you know, either way, they're fun fish to catch. You can't argue that, especially in the surf. Fun for me to target. And, you know, I'll keep coming back out here and try to catch them while they're here. And finally, like I said, the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow 110 the metallic sardine color. Great bait out in the surf. And if you don't believe me, check out the video. You know, I filmed it a little while ago, but like I said, monster striper off the rocks, epic battle. And I still don't, to this day, don't know how I was able to land that fish, but I did. Proof is in the video. Probably wouldn't believe me if I didn't have a video of it. So check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. But thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.